A light novel by Gen Orbochi, illustrated by Takashi Takuchi, and a prequel to Tight Moon's visual novel, Fate Stay Night. I watched Fate Stay Night before Fate Zero, but find myself confused at points. It felt like things were hinted for you to watch Fate Zero for it to make sense, but it just led to more confusion. Think about an inside joke, where they tell you about the details of said joke after the fact. Unlimited Blade Works has been released, which should be a retelling of Fate Stay Night. So as far as recommendations, I would avoid Fate Stay Night. Watch Fate Zero, then proceed to Unlimited Blade Works. Okay, enough of the bullshit. Let's get to the plot. In Fate Zero, the Fourth Holy Grail War has commenced in Fuyuki City. If you did skip Fate Stay Night, the Holy Grail War is a contest in which seven mages summon seven heroic spirits to compete for wish from said Holy Grail. The Grail is said to grant a wish to each member of the winning team. The contest was founded by the Heinsburn, Mato, and Tosaka families centuries back. The story revolves mainly around the Einsburns and their recruitment of the notorious hitman who everyone hates, Kiritsuku Emiya. Along with Kotomi Nikire, these two are easily the most interesting characters in the series, but more about them later. The story shows how far family or individuals would go for power, even if it means sacrificing what means the most to them. The Einsburn, pride. Tosaka, family. And the Mato, just about anything. The appeal of the show seems to be the heroes. From discussions with friends and associates, what got them into the show in the first place was the thought of mages using heroic spirits to compete. The heroic spirits are however based on real life figures in history, which makes it all the more interesting because then the writing and plot takes off. The way the real life achievements are intertwined with the heroes and their traits are spot on. I'll introduce the heroic spirits and their classes as well as their real names, so research their past and you will see what I mean. Saber. Arturia Pendragon, or King Arthur. Archer, Gilgamesh, King of Heroes. Lancer, the Armuid Uar Garina. Ryder, Iskander, Alexander the Great. Castor, Bluebeard, Gilles de Rey. Berserker, Lancelot Dulac. Assassin, the Hundred Face Hassan. The most profiled class, Saber, who is the partner of Kritsuko Emiya is at first presented to be the most noble and deserving of the grail. She's strong-willed, brave, and beautiful. We later find out about her wish through an interesting conversation between herself, Iskander, and Gilgamesh, which could change your outlook on Arturia Pendrag. The animation is magnificent throughout the show, and the quality really dips. The characters do appear stiff at times, but it doesn't impact the overall view of the series. The fights are fluid, and leaves you at the edge of your seat because of how well done they are. The OSD is amazing and flows well with the events set in the stage for such. However, it does not give it away, so the distinction between a death and triumph is pretty difficult, and that's a great thing. Now to the most interesting characters in the series Kotomi Nikide and Kiritsugu Emiya. I came across these quotes and it said this about Kide, which sums him up perfectly He's an evil person, but not a villain. He is deviant, but not inhuman. He is not sane but neither is he insane. Kirei is a prodigy from birth, but even from all that he accomplished, his mind was warped and never felt satisfaction. He tried several things to find his purpose through a passion. He finds it through the pursuit of Kiritsugu Emiya, who is equally as interested in Kotomi Nikide, not because he has no purpose or ideals, but because Kotomi Nikide was the only thing that could possibly stand in the way of his. From a young age, Kiritsugu had purpose. He knew what he wanted and constantly sacrificed some for the sake of many, even if it meant sacrificing loved ones. He treated loved ones as tools, but rationalizing it through, as I said before, the sacrifice of some for the sake of many. The outcome of this battle was important, perhaps decided the winner of the Grail War. Perhaps. All in all, I think Fate Zero is an anime that everyone could enjoy but also criticize. We have heaps of useless dialogue and dream matchups that never materialize. Or rather, when they did, didn't exactly live up to the hype. It is littered with interesting characters and personalities which will keep you interested in the story. I suppose that lasts a bit longer than epic battle sequences, but one can dream, right? The voice acting literally brings you to your feet, in particular, Kiritsuku Emiya and Kotomine Kide. Can you figure out who are my two favorite characters in the series? 
I do recommend Phase Zero for anyone who wants to experience superb animation, intelligent dialogue, with a subpar ending. For me, Phase Zero is a 9 out of 10. It is the borderline classic and you can literally enjoy this no matter how many times you watch it. Trust me, I've, I've watched it a lot of times. Each character with their own convictions and ideologies grip you and it keeps you interested in the story for 25 episodes. Fate Zero is licensed and available from Anaplex and can be legally streamed on Crunchyroll. Please let me know what you thought about this series, like the video if you did, also leave any recommendations of any anime you'd like me to review, and I'll give it a shot. Thank you guys so much for your time, have a good day.